Hi, this is Gilles, the Radio Prepper. Well, it's been a while since I've published a video, <laughs> but you know, life gets in the way and I just simply run out of ideas. Sometimes it's, you know, it takes a little bit of a reset to, uh, to come up with new stuff to, uh, to show you guys. If you've been following this channel, you know that I'm a big fan of half-wave and fed antennas, simply because they are so easy to set up. They're not the most efficient, although they are pretty efficient being a full-size resonant antenna, but they're so easy, so easy to set up only one attachment point and they work extremely well. So today I'm going to show you the construction of a very small antenna kit by K6ARK. Let's see what's in the bag and really there isn't much. We get a little uh, K6ARK sticker and the components, the key part being this little circuit board here. Some wire, heat shrink tubing, a little bit of tubing here, and we have a BNC connector. And make sure you don't lose it in the package. There is a surface mount component, it's a capacitor, and that's very easy to lose. I almost lost it. The manual has instructions for different types of construction. On the left you see a 49 to 1 or 64 to 1 transformer. In the middle you have a 1 to 1 ballon. And on the right you have a 9 to 1 anon. The schematic shows a classic transformer with a 100 picofarad capacitor, 1 kV. Usually I use uh, 3 kV, but this is for QRP only, so 1000 volts uh, should be more than enough. We have 3 turns primary, uh, which is great for such a small toroid. Uh, you wouldn't want to use 2, that, that wouldn't quite be enough. 21 turns total, that makes a 49 to 1 anon. I'm going to make a 64 to 1 and that would be 3 turns primary and 24 turns total. It shows also a counterpoise but again for QRP power I wouldn't use a counterpoise and actually that would make it not <laughs> a half wave and fed. I would just use the, uh, the half wave radiator and it's very important that it be a half wave wire. The first thing I want to do, so I don't lose it, is to solder that tiny capacitor on those two square pads here. Oops, and that's really, really tiny, but I'll show you how I do that. So I taped the uh, circuit board to the table here, and I'll tell you, masking tape is the radio operator's best friend. So I'm just going to put a little blob of solder, really small here, on one of the pads, and of course my tip is dirty. There we go. I almost lost the capacitor guys. It was stuck to my hand. So I'm going to put it here on the board with tweezers and just going to solder one side. Uh, I don't see as well as I used to, I'll tell you. This is not going to be easy. I used to have no problem building surface mount component kits, but it's getting harder and harder. And on the other side, it's not exactly centered, but the hell with it. Definitely not centered, but the solder points look good. I think it's fine. This doesn't look like a short. I think it's a marking on the board, so we should be just fine. The markings on the board show K6ARK. I'm not quite sure what the other one is. It looks like something 7M. I'm not quite sure. Micro EFHW 49 to 1 Anon. Here we have a C poise, of course, for counterpoise. In, ground, and out. Uh, we'll see about that on the manual. And antenna, that's pretty clear. Next, you're going to take this piece of wire and cut it in half, leaving one of them an inch longer. Actually, I ended up with two identical length wires, but I don't think it matters. I'm going to strip one here, just a little bit. Put a little bit of solder on that. Not too much. I'll solder that into the antenna pad. And you have to make sure that your wire, you don't have too much solder on your wire because the hole is really, uh, really small. 
Here we go, that's pretty nice. There is a strain relief hole right next to it. Right, uh, okay, focus. So I'm going to uh, thread the wire into that. The uh, torrid used is an FT50-43 and that's really, really small. Now some people will tell you that this is absolutely unusable and that it's not efficient enough, it has too much losses. The minimum one I use is the FT82-43, so a lot bigger. And actually I uh, often suggest using the FT140-43 or for high power FT240-43. Now the big one is 2.4 inches uh, diameter. So you would think that this is going to be, uh, you know, very lossy. But the fact is that even though a smaller toroid is, you know, has much, uh, much more losses, but the fact that the turns are much closer together and basically it's a, it's a dancer uh, transformer basically uh, with the turns uh, again closer to one another actually that is more efficient so so does the efficiency provided by the closeness of the turns uh, actually trump the uh, losses uh, from the size probably not so I think that smaller is a little bit lossier but I don't think it's as much as people think it is because using smaller toroids like this one I haven't noticed in the field any difference between uh, any practical difference between uh, a smaller one like this and a bigger one like an FT140-43 uh, or 240-43 so who knows uh, that would have to be measured but again I don't think that the losses would be uh, too much with this and anyway the toroids we have in our tiny uh, QRP radios aren't bigger than this one, so I think it's going to work fine. There should be enough wire to uh, make a 64 to 1 transformer. I prefer to make a 64 to 1 uh, rather than a 49 to 1 because this is going to be used with a very thin wire, an antenna wire, so thinner wires have a higher impedance, so I'd rather have it divided by uh, 64 or 65 than have it divided by uh, 50. So this is going to be three turns primary. So one turn every time it goes through the core. So that's already one turn. And I'm going to continue. I'm going to do it the same way that uh, it's done on the uh, K6 ARK website. So one, well actually, you know what? I should twist that before I do that. So I'm going to actually twist the wire here. And that's not in the inst instructions, but uh, I think it's it, it's going to make it easier. So you twist it by making sure that uh, you don't twist one wire around the other, but they should be twisted uh, around each other. And it doesn't have to be precise; just uh, just twist them like so. On a toroid, we count the turns on the inside, so one, two, three turns. And uh, so this is going to be uh, continue. I'm going to continue spool this. I'm going to untwist this one that's going to be on the center of the BNC of course probably going to go on the on the PCB and I'm going to continue pull the wires at turn so that's turn number four five And I'll continue until I reach 24 turns total. And now we have 24 turns. Now I need to take the insulation off. Now I don't suggest you do <laughs> you do it the same way I do, because it's very, very easy to break a wire. Actually, maybe with a razor blade or um, I don't know, but I'm just very carefully, very lightly going to strip the enamel from this wire. And I'm going to do it for all three of them. So the end wire here, the one that uh, is the 24th turn, is going to go into the out pad on the PCB. The one that's twisted is going to go to ground. And the one here after the third turn primary is going to go to in. 
and basically it's going to look like this the pads are placed in such a way that makes it easy to uh, identify them and position the toroid on top of the circuit board then i just have to open up move the uh, toroid out of the way here to solder the bnc connector and of course i messed up <laughs> the uh this one the wire here this wire should be on this pad because this is for the bnc connector so uh, that's a mistake i'm gonna have to move it right there and i accidentally put some solder here on the center pin of the bnc connector so i'm gonna have to clean that up as well i'll take care of this pad first here i just removed it and i put it in the one next to it to clean up the pads, I use this uh, copper wick, uh, super wick, it works really well. So you just basically put your copper on the pad you want to clean, you put your soldering iron on top of it, you press it really hard and the copper will just soak up the solder, just remove it and you're done. You can see here that I uh, cleaned up the uh, center pin hole. Now I just need to clean up the uh, other hole here for the BNC connector. Soak up the solder. There we go. I do have to band uh, those uh, leads a bit. Uh, it is mentioned on the manual. So I'll just spread them out a tiny, tiny amount. And that should do it. I'm going to try to not have the legs of the BNC connector here being too long otherwise it might just rub against the, uh, the wires and cause a short later so I'm going to probably put them about like this and solder them on. Actually I think I'm going to solder the uh, on the other side here of the PCB. Of course I have to wait that the heat um, is distributed throughout the uh, the connector here. Otherwise, it's not going to be a good solder joint, so that's going to take a little bit of time. Now, I can't help but wonder if really we have to go that small, you know, with an FT50-43 as opposed to an FT82-43. So, construction is simple, but not, not that easy because it's so small. Personally, I will stick with an FT82-43 in a small 3D printed box. But if you're chasing ounces, well, why not? Soldering the uh, center pin here is going to be more trouble and uh, I'm just going to go through the center of the toroid here and of course there isn't much light, it's getting dark here. The uh, toroid material itself is not conductive so I'm not worried too much about the legs of the connector here touching the uh, the core but I am worried about the wires, the, uh, the turns here rubbing against the legs and uh, creating a short later so that's probably not the best arrangement here. Maybe putting some uh, insulation between the uh, toroid and the PCB would be a good thing. So everything should test as being shorted here. So center to ground should be a short. It's a, of course a short on DC, it's not a short on RF. Yep. Okay. So I really don't want this to move, right? So you know what I'm going to do. You do, if you follow the channel, you know what I'm going to do. Ta-da! While the uh, hot glue gun is uh, warming up, I'm going to solder this uh, alligator clip here on the antenna wire so that I can use my uh, existing wires. Ah, oh, I'm so dumb. Spot the error. Yeah. Sometimes I'm that dumb. Fortunately, that was an easy fix. Now I'll apply the uh, heat shrink tubing. It might be a little bit wide actually. I think it's a little too big, but sometimes it's hard to find the right size. Actually, it's working out pretty good here. Well, I have to say I do like the uh, final result here. You can see it's really, really small, so for people who really want to save weight, uh, that's uh, that would be a good thing to have. I don't need to save that much weight, so <laughs> once again I'll stick with my FT82 in a plastic box. But uh, yeah, I can see how this could be uh, pretty interesting. And actually this is a female BNC, so it will go right into a coax cable. 
Awesome. All right, so yes, <laughs> I'm in my boat today and uh, I'm in the marina. So I won't be able to test this antenna because uh, my truck has uh, sprung a leak, an oil leak. So um, I can't drive it. That, I mean, you can follow me just by <laughs> following the, the trickle of oil uh, on the ground. So uh, not a good idea to, uh, to drive around like that. Uh, the cops would find me very easily uh, right to my uh, parking spot. So. Uh, as soon as I can, uh, as soon as I can fix it, I will take that antenna uh, in the field and test it. But I'm sure it's going to work fine. Um, anyway, I hope you, I uh, hope you liked it. I'm here actually. I have to pump the uh, the bilge. I'm going to show you that little quick. Maybe <laughs> I really need to clean this boat. Uh, it just gets dirty all by itself. Uh, just standing here. So uh, th this is the bilge. That's uh, where the water collects, and uh, there is a pump here. And actually. It's dry, so nothing to do today. All right, so back to radio. <laughs> if you want to follow my uh, boating adventures, which haven't started yet, uh, uh, sign up, uh, subscribe to SV Ragnar, and uh, you'll find me there. I have a few videos, but uh, I'm just starting that channel, so uh, there isn't much yet. But anyway, that's about it for the uh, unfed half wave uh, on a uh, BNC uh, connector. I like the size. It's uh, it's really small. I uh, again, I think it's going to work fine. So until I can test it, have a good one.